Welcome back to The Ed Show. Progressive Democrats don't want to put any more money into staying in Iraq. That's not surprising. But many of them are also skeptical about President Obama's plans to increase our forces in Afghanistan. Democrat Jim McGovern of Massachusetts says he's afraid we're getting deeper and deeper into a war that has no end. The bottom line is, folks, 50,000 troops on the ground in Iraq is $4 billion a month. When does it end? Will it ever end? Joining me now is Congressman Dennis Kucinich, longtime progressive Democrat from Ohio. Dennis, great to have you back with us again tonight. Thanks so much. I Thanks, suppose sir. I better clarify it. Are, are you one of the 17 socialists that uh, Mr. Bacchus is talking about? Are you going to take that claim tonight? Spencer's a good friend of mine. Peace. <laughs> Peace. That's, that's the great answer right there. Uh, are you okay with this money? Are you okay with the, the president asking for another $84 billion to go do what uh, he wants to do in Iraq and Afghanistan? Uh, I actually voted against the budget because of the budget for Iraq and Afghanistan, and I will vote against the supplemental. I think we're getting deeper into it in Afghanistan. According to General Petraeus, who asked for another 10,000 troops a couple weeks ago, uh, we could end up with as many as 78,000 troops in Afghanistan by next year. Uh, we're accelerating the war there instead of getting out. I think it's very dangerous, and I think we're going to uh, find that we can't afford it, either uh, both in terms of uh, loss of, of troops as well as uh, loss of dollars. Congressman, what would be your solution? Would you just exit both those countries? Yes. Flat out, you would just get out of Iraq and get out of Afghanistan. Yeah, we do it, we do it in concert with uh, a more regional approach. I think you have to look at Afghanistan in terms of the approach that uh, the Shanghai Cooperative has been taking. We, we really need to look at the fact that uh, NATO cannot truly function uh, in that region in Afghanistan. I mean, think about it. What does NATO stand for? North Atlantic Treaty Organization. We have a, a geographically impaired approach here. What NATO is doing in and in, in, in around Afghanistan is uh, highly questionable. But what and would I, you do, Congressman? What would you do to fight Al Qaeda? There are, uh, you know, elements on the face of the earth that want to destroy the United States, and they are, you know, camped in that region of the world. And the president, who was, uh, you know, vilified by conservatives that he wouldn't be a hawk on terrorists is uh, doing exactly what he said he was going to do. Now, what would you do to fight terrorism? The first rule that you have to remember is that an occupation fuels an insurgency that happened in Iraq, and it continues to happen in Iraq, and it's happening in Afghanistan as well. So you think al-Qaeda would change their attitude towards the United States' existence if we were to get out of that region? Uh, this isn't about taking an approach where you can use massive armies to go after these terrorists. You know, to the extent that terrorism represents a threat to the national security of the United States, we have an obligation to protect our country. But Iraq didn't add to the protection of the United States. We were lied to to get into that war. And staying in Afghanistan is against the interests of the United States because there's no way to win in Afghanistan. How do you separate al-Qaeda from the Taliban, from the people who are f switching sides, going back into uh, Pakistan and back into Afghanistan? So what would you do about Osama bin Laden? Would you just let him go? Oh, and just yeah, the Osama bin Laden card. Uh, you know, where is bin Laden? I mean, this is like the Where's Waldo of, of international games. Would you go I mean, after if he him? Was so, if, if he was so important... Wouldn't we have already found him with the hundreds of billions of dollars and all the geniuses we have running our country? Wouldn't we have already found him? This isn't about bin Laden anymore. It's about whether or not the United States will work with the world community in recognizing certain areas where we cannot remain. We cannot remain in Iraq, and we cannot remain in Afghanistan. It's contrary to our national security interests. It only gets us deeper and deeper into war and creates more instability instead of less. Okay. Congressman Kucinich, great to have you on the program tonight. I appreciate it. Good Obviously, to see you, we're going to want you back. Absolutely. Thanks so much. All Thanks. points of view on this program. We've got a great panel for you tonight. Let's bring them in. Political writer and commentator Nancy Giles and Republican strategist Tucker Bounds, former chief spokesman for John McCain, and radio talk show host Jack Rice. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank Nancy, you. we'll start with you. Do you agree with Congressman Kucinich? Do you agree, agree with, with the funding of 83? I agree with some of what he said. I mean, he said that we didn't have genius. We, we didn't have geniuses that were running the war before. He, he sort of um, made an allusion to that. I mean, $822 billion 
were spent on the war on the supplemental funding since 2001 but it wasn't regulated we don't know where that money spent all we heard was things like our brave men and women overseas needed body armor they had second-rate uh, uh, tools to to fight the war and even though it, it upsets me it's horrifying it, to even let get us out of that war is going to cost money to extract ourselves from what's going on in Iraq is going to cost money and troops. Okay, so you are not in favor of the $83 billion that President Obama wants. I am in the sense that I feel he's really going to make sure that money is regulated, okay. make sure that it goes directly to the troops, that there won't be war profiteering or badly constructed okay. uh, you know, showers for our soldiers overseas. Tucker Bounds, do you support the president on asking for this funding to continue operations in those countries? Well, I don't know if it's important on what my views are, but I do know that a lot of Republicans in Congress support this. And I think that it's, to many conservatives around the country, this is a breath of fresh air. He's taking a lot of uh, uh, steps towards eradicating terrorism from the Middle East, which is important to conservatives. But the bigger question is, how long until he abandons this policy? Because I think what Dennis Kucinich brings up are valid points that the liberal left is going to make. And I think that's a liberal left that, this, that the Obama administration is at some point going to begin to cater to. So really, it's just a stopwatch. We're going to see how long you can keep this up before he abandons a policy. But what it is, is it is a signal that he's going to fight terrorism. And uh, it'll just be interesting to see how long he, he keeps this course. Okay, Jack Rice, you're coming from the middle of the country, the Twin Cities in Minnesota. How much time does President Obama, how much patience, how much room does he have with the American people on this issue? You know, it, it's a great question, but actually I think it's a different question we have to ask. It's not just about the patience of the American people. We also need the patience of the Afghan people. Look, I'm actually with him on this one, and I appreciate the fact that they're looking at it like adults, because you can't look at Afghanistan in isolation. Remember, I'm not just a talk show host. I'm a former CIA case officer. And so when I think of this, I realize he's actually decided it's not about just Afghanistan. They look at that. They put in concert what's going on in Pakistan, which must be done, and they're even looking at the impact that you Iran has here. Look, this has been the problem in the past. We've decided it's a simple answer. We can fit it on a bumper sticker. This is not a bumper sticker question. Mm -hmm. It's a five-hour question. If we don't look at it like that, we're going to have very serious problems. So the president, across all political lines for the most part, has got the country with him on this, I Nancy. I believe he does. I okay. believe he does. I mean, and that's and maybe that's show. why his approval ratings are, are where they are right now. Well, despite what the Republicans might say, yeah, the uh, guy's got the support because it seems like he's trying to fight the war now the way it should have been fought in the beginning. He's, he's trying to go back and target things for the way that they should have been. Tucker, why, uh, why are the, <laughs> the right-wing talkers of this country uh, so negative about this president. Why are they just going after every issue? They can't say a good word, even when there's good economic news out there. We can't get a good word out of anybody on the right. Ed, I mean, come on. Is that a legitimate question? Conservative talkers on the radio, of course they're going to be critical of the they're president. They're all Republicans. They are all he's Republicans. A, he's a Democratic president who's taking core, is very liberal policies. He's deficit spending up the gazoo. There are a lot of things that you can criticize about his policies. He's a charismatic leader. I think he has the support of the American people. As you mentioned earlier in your show, 66% of Americans support the job he's doing. But when you look at his policies, those are vastly and much more or uh, they're problematic in the sense that they're just not as popular okay. as he is. Jack Rice, so I got to ask you a simple answer. Uh, go I ahead, got a Jack. Simple answer for it. You know what it is? They're pandering. That's what this is about. The fact is, is President Bush spent more money than any president since LBJ. That's according to the Cato Institute. So the idea that they could come back now and say, oh, we need to be financially f fiscal. How, how does that happen all of a sudden now? I'm shocked. It's like being reborn. It's amazing. Well, Good point. Jack, you have After to understand when the, party, when the party's in a bad shape like it is right now, you have to go back to your foundation. And what we're seeing is a rebirth in the Republican Party of fiscal conservatism. It should have never been abandoned in, under the Bush administration. And there were some stalwarts on spending, like John McCain, I mind you. Well, so he I lost, think that Going back to our basics is a strong move. Little news flash, buddy. I mean, he, 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 he lost by quite a bit. In fact, he lost 11 Bush states, okay? Just so we're, we're on the same page there. We'll come back. We're, in a terrible we're, environment. Stay with us. We're going to come back.